Good evening, learned members of the audience. Tell you a little about myself. I did my MBBS and MS from Ramya University in Bangalore. I subsequently did my neurosurgery diploma at National Boards from Apollo Hospital, Chennai. I've been in neurosurgical practice since 1997, right after I completed my MS. And I have a special interest in pediatric neurosurgery. I practice pediatric neurosurgery at Kanji Kamakota Child Test Hospital. And I do adult neurosurgery at Isabel Hospital, Chennai. Today I will be talking to you about low back pain, a condition that we commonly see in our practice and we ourselves have. The recent US national study labeled low back ache as the nation's biggest non fatal health problem is the most common reason to see the doctor. 60 to 76 percent of all adults at least once in their lifetime or at least two weeks suffered low back pain. 30% of adults at any one time suffered from low back pain. This accounted for 80% of all disability costs and 17% of all bed days. All over the world, increasing industrialization, physical stress, mental tension, life expectancy will make low back ache a major health problem in the next decade. This next decade is already here because this study is over 10 years old now. And we are seeing it. Increasing obesity, sedentary habits and deteriorating road conditions are adding to the incidents. Well, the reasons for low back ache range from most trivial to the most dangerous. We have to diagnose this correctly. It is a disaster to operate on a patient with mild disc protrusion whose main cause of back ache is psychological. The patient will not improve and may take the core doctor to court. It is a greater disaster treat conservatively with drugs where the real problem is an unsuspected tumor. The patient may die or may become paraplegic for life with double incontinence. Definitely take the doctor to court. There are a lot of differential diagnoses. I will not go bit by bit and just give you the broad headings. Degenerative diseases, stability related diseases, inflammation, osteoporosis, infective, Tumors of the bone, both benign and malignant. Tumors of other structures in the bone and spinal column, metastatic diseases. Other tumors of the neural and neural supportive structures. Other conditions in the abdomen or other places. And conditions of the reproductive system. All of these can cause back pain. These include prostatic hypertrophy, prostatic carcinoma, unsuitable posture, and psychological causes apart from malingering compensations. In the case of lumbar disc protrusion, which is the most common cause of low back pain, ask for occupation, exertion, sciatica, claudication, numbness, stiffness, and weakness. Also ask for other things like dysuria, trauma, tuberculosis, diabetes, and previous surgery. There are more than a hundred accepted causes of back pain and incidents of back pain where a cause cannot be found. The most common cause remains wear and tear of the structures constituting the spine due to abnormal use of back and due to poor posture. Also ask for lack of interest, lack of libido. These histories will try to give you at the clinical level itself, at the history level itself, what the reason of the low back pain can be. In a lumbar disc protrusion, the characteristic features include first a low back pain, then a sciatica, spontaneous remissions and exacerbation. Each next episode is stronger and longer than the previous. Some movements of the pain, spine will increase the pain and some will not. There may or may not be a cross sciatica, there may be paraspinal tenderness and there may be a sciatic scoliosis. Aggravating factors include bending, forward, sideward, backward, sitting, standing, using a stairs or a ramp, straining, periods, travel by bus, jeep or auto. We have found that traveling by car and motorbike do not increase the pain mainly because maybe the car is more comfortable and in driving a bike the patient himself drives. So he knows where to put his bike down and where not. Sagging bed will increase the pain lying on a side only. Easy chair, having sex, faulty posture, weightlifting and cycling. 
Pain is relieved by bed rest on a flat surface using a lumbosacral pill, traction either intermittent or continuous, exercise, changing the posture, analgesics, anti-inflammatory agents, tranquilizers and other drugs. Some of the features of functional or feigned pain. The patient may have a flat facial expression, have an inappropriate concern or depression and is not pain. Dramatic gait or posture, pain that radiates all over. Non-anatomic and light touch tenderness, pain increase when the back or the pelvis is rotated rather than the spine. He will be able to put his leg up in a sitting position but won't be able to do that in a lying down position. He will complain of weakness or sensory disturbance in the entire limb or body or have other classical features like unilateral glove and stocking anesthesia, horizontal sensory level, uh, disjoint vibration sensation and so on. Most often organic and functional disease present together. Many of our patients we see in clinical practice get a little better with a drug like amitriptyline or riloxetine and then we all go on to find that there is some other cause also. Normal straight leg raising can happen in certain conditions like lumbar canal stenosis, spondylolisthesis, higher level of disc, women accustomed to bending down well since childhood. You will apply SLR 120. So, practice like clinical 90 degrees path only, we say it is normal. Because 120 is 90 degrees. And in malingering. Spend enough time with the patient, listen to him fully and question him thoroughly. Examine him completely and get his confidence. I always say you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And every doctor who treats these cases must consider himself a psychiatrist first. Due respect to psychiatrists here physician next and a surgeon last. I take about half an hour for each patient. Some points to remember here are uncommon manifestation of common disease is much more common than a common manifestation of an uncommon disease. It needs much more courage, knowledge and experience not to operate than to operate. When clinical findings and imaging findings do not correlate with each other, Repeat both after a suitable interval of time. It is the patient who takes the risk and not the surgeon. Although the mortality percentage of an operation may be 1%, the person who dies loses 100% of his life. If there is a medical and a surgical cause in the same patient, treat the medical cause first. Sometimes these guys don't need surgery. If there is a surgical cause which is non-neoplastic and a non-infectious, and aggravating cause, treat the aggravating cause first. This guy also may escape surgery. The best prevention of recurrence or residual symptoms of the spine surgery is optimal surgery. The bad results of surgery are the results of bad surgery. The patient's best chance of cure is the first operation. What is the treatment at the acute stage? Absolute bed rest. What we recommend is to make the patient lie down 24 hours of the day, minimum 7 days on a firm, flat cot. We do not allow the patient to sleep on the floor. We ask for a regular cot with 2-3 bed sheets on top, give him a single pillow, tell him not to bend his head to watch the TV, place the TV on top of the table and then allow him only to get up to pass urine or to take a bath. We also advise take a bath once in 2 days. Most of these people the pain reduces. Local heat, analgesics, sensitivities, exercise, we advise only after the pain subsides. Lumbosacral belt is useful most often after the condition has been treated on the remission period. Well, I will give you some prevention and relief tips because I understand and I know that most of us also suffer from back pain. When you are standing, whatever you are doing, get one foot supported a little higher. When I operate, I always stand on one leg and the other leg is on top of the base of the operating table. And I lean slightly on the table, make sure the table doesn't shake. Keep the working surface halfway between the waist and the wrist while standing. And this is true for housewives also when they work in the kitchen. While sitting, the 
feet should be supported on the floor and not dangling. I use a chair where the height can be adjusted. Give a proper support to the lower back. Choose a chair with an armrest. If you are using a reading stand or a computer monitor, make sure that you are not bending forward or turning sideways. Many of us have a computer in the consultation room. Try to put it as close to your straight line of vision as possible. If you have to sit long hours, get up once in an hour, take a small walk. If your patient is working in an office which is very cramped up, ask him to stand up, try to bend at his knee, try to sit down as if sitting in a chair, something like that. You know, you can ask him to do this. Hold for a couple of seconds, then go up slowly. That will exercise his knee. Actually, it exercises about 16 muscles all at the same time. And this can be done for about 4 or 5 times and then he can go back to his chair like a software professional. And these guys don't have recurring problems. While you drive, any gap between the should be at a higher level than the hip. And this you can adjust by pulling the seat backward or forward. If you have long journeys, you can stop every hour, get out, have a small walk and then get in the car. When you get out of the car, you swivel the whole body towards the door. Don't jerk up. And then put your feet on the ground, then get up. On lying down, use a firm bed with a good mattress. I would suggest a rubberized fire mattress, which is thin. Avoid lying on the floor because when you get off the floor and get up, you have to twist your back and push yourself up. It is very bad on the back. Avoid slouching or swinging. Use a single good pillow and try a pillow under the knee the days you feel very much pain in the back. When you are carrying things, use both arms. Carry smaller loads than one larger load. If the load cannot be divided, hold it close to the body. If you are pulling or pushing something, Keep the back straight, need not be vertical, bend at the hip and knee. Use the legs rather than the arms. If you have a choice, pushing is much better. So don't pull. When you are lifting something off the floor, bending forward to lift items is not a good idea. When you approach the object, relax at your knee, bend your knee. Try to sit on the floor as close to the object as possible, keep your feet apart. Try to hold on to the object with both hands. If you find it too heavy, ask for help. Don't do it yourself. Lift the object gradually. Most of our patients give the history that they tried some sort of a new gymnasium exercise or they tried to move furniture at home. This always happens. Posture, mobility and exercises. Good posture is possible only with a good mobile spine and a good muscle tone. The spine loses its shock absorbing capacity when there is no flexibility and the supporting muscles are weak. Change your lifestyle. I have told this to patients and to doctors but uh, nobody listens. What I do in my practice because I also had back pain when I just finished my general surgery. I started walking to my clinic. My clinic is about 0.75 kilometers from my house. So whether it is rain or shine or midday or late in the night I always walk. The car stays at home only for long journeys. Do not exercise when there is pain. Well, who will do the surgery? If there is a root compression or a spinal canal tumor, we maintain that the neurosurgeon is better trained to decompress. If there is a spinal column tumor or unstable spine, the orthopedic surgeon is the king. We have a new breed of surgeons called a spinal surgeons and these people are threatening to take the both our patients away because they are good at both. Collaboration is always essential and it helps the patient in the long run. What are the indications for surgery? Emergency urinary retention, absolute sequestered fragment, canal stenosis, progressing deficit. Relative indications are massive disproportion, multiple disproportions, non-progressive deficit, severe pain interfering with occupation, failed conservative treatment for three weeks. This is the US recommendation of three weeks. Rarely we follow it. We say that if you don't get better in about 12 days or one month, whichever is beneficial to the patient, because we have get patients who are contractors who travel a lot, then we say you go in for surgery. Bladder involvement is important because if the preoperative urinary retention is one day, it takes one week to recover. As you can see, if the preoperative retention is one month, it almost never recovers. 
The longer the preoperative neurological deficit, the longer the postoperative recovery. The greater the preoperative neurological deficit, the less complete the postoperative recovery. So once you decide this guy needs surgery, please go ahead and get it done at the next opportune moment. There are several varieties of the way surgery can be done, the endoscopic, penetration, hemilaminectomy, total laminectomy, automated percutaneous lumbar discectomy, laser assisted. What I would do is a laminectomy and look at both sides. If the patient is somebody who is walking and has to drive a lot, I would do a hemilaminectomy. Well, posterior decompression of the nerve root, excision of protruding disc, excision of the degenerative disc, this is the steps of surgery. Excision of all the disc material, interbody fusion, I don't do the last three, but these are also the steps involved. <coughs> what is failed back surgery syndrome? 20 to 40 percent of the patients come back to you and say, Doctor, I am getting pain again. Wrong indication for surgery. A cause that is not surgically treatable that you have done surgery for. Wrong diagnosis, like surgically treatable tumor but you removed an incidental disc. Diagnosis and indication correct but surgery incorrect or inadequate. Postoperative complications. We get a good measure of failback syndromes. Most of these are because the disc has recurred at a different level. Now I have not included that here because by definition FPSS does not continue, contain that because this is the same disease that has come elsewhere. As far as the patient is concerned, he comes back and says, Adevali Abdeeriyudu. And the MRI will show a different level. That is because the patient is not exercising. The patient is not following your instructions. There is something called as chemonucleolysis. I do not do it, but this is the information regarding that. Injection of thymopepine or collagenase or hydrocortisone, even ozone, is tried into the disc. The disc reduces, the, the inflammation reduces and therefore the pressure reduces. It can be done only purely in a case of disc protrusion without sequestration. These are the contraindications and complications. My philosophy is be conservative in opening weight for a definitive indication. Be radical in decompression of root, look at all possible sites. Be conservative in fusion, wait for a definitive indication. We will go to the next condition. Dr. Arunachal, stop me. The talk is designed for 21 minutes. You want me to cut down? I will cut down. There is no problem. Spinal repetitive lapses is a rare condition. Therefore, it is likely to be missed. It is a surgical emergency. Early treatment leads to excellent recovery. If you delay 2-3 days, the patient may not recover at all. Suspect in patients with reduced resistance are who are more susceptible to infection. Elderly, diabetics, alcoholics, drug addicts or immuno immunodeficient people. Locally, there may be a bed sore, osteomyelitis, psoas abscess, retroperitoneal abscess, previous LP, previous epidural injection. Distant urinary tract infection, subacute endocarditis, endogenous sepsis, dental or lung infection. This is an MRI. I have not brought the MRI of the lumbar disc prolapse because all of you would have seen it. This is an epidural abscess. The enhancing area is the... Okay. The enhancing area which you see is white. That is the epidural abscess. A simple laminectomy will get the abscess out and the patient will be relieved. So surgical emergency, contraindications are only if the radiological lesion is small and resolving or the neurological deficit is recovering. Spondylolisthesis, there are varieties, dysplastic, rhythmic, degenerative, traumatic, pathological and post-surgical. Plain x-rays, special views and MRI help in the diagnosis as well as in lumbar disc also. Do a plain x-ray first followed by MRI. This is a case of spondylolisthesis. There are grades in this, grade 1, grade 2 and grade 3. Most or all of these will need surgery at some point in time. So it is better to be done when the patient is relatively better off. Physiotherapy, flexion exercise, brace mobilization, activity modification, 
significant or debilitating progressive neurologic deficit, spinal fusion with or without compression, decompression with or without reduction. Another important cause of low back pain is ankylosing spondylitis. Chronic back pain commencing insidiously in a patient age between 20 and 40 years. Early morning stiffness, pain decreases throughout the day, improvement with exercise, limited chest expansion and progressive limitation of movement. Plain X-ray will show a bilateral sacroiliitis, elevated ESR, elevated C-reactive protein are confirmatory. I know you will object when I say C-reactive protein is confirmatory, but you have to take it all together. Osteoporosis or Paget's disease is a radiological diagnosis. Would you like me to stop? Okay. Okay. Saturday night, the talk is programmed for 21 minutes. So it encompasses every cause that is common in clinical practice. There is sudden or acute pain with or without local tenderness, with or without deformity, may indicate vertical body collapse fracture and active treatment is indicated. These are pictures of osteoporosis. Fluorosis, especially seen in Andhra Pradesh and India, also seen in Libya and Ethiopia. Pain and stiffness start in the lumbar region and spread upwards. There is restriction of spinal movements, vague discomfort and paresthesia in the limbs and trunk. Later on, stiffness and pain spreading to dorsal and thoracic regions. Both are same. Sorry for the typo. You check the urinary fluoride level, bone fluoride level and a plain X-ray. Plain X-ray will show a coarsening of trabecular pattern, starts in the lumbar region and later a blurring and fusion of trabecular. Finally, a marble white appearance of osteosclerosis. CT will reveal the presence and extent of ossification, reveals the site and degree of canal stenosis. MRA reveals the site and extent of neural compression and is absolutely essential before surgical intervention. Spine is the most common site of skeletal involvement of metastatic tumor. The first and most universal symptom is pain. This begins insidiously and progresses relentlessly, persists despite rest. Usually localized and there may be a history that the patient was operated earlier. These are pictures of spinal metastasis. This totally destroyed the body coming onto the spinal canal, the neural foramen is not seen. Spine tumor, ESR, tumor markers, chest x-ray, CT, MRI, bone scan biopsy, decompression, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, still the pain may not go. Spinal tuberculosis, locally symptoms and general symptoms. Investigation protocol similar to spine tumor, look extensively for other lesions. Take the biopsy from the most accessible site. The example of spinal tuberculosis. The difference that you see between the metastasis and the spinal tuberculosis is that you will see that the body is not destroyed on the MRI in the case of spinal tuberculosis. But unfortunately, when you open and go in, the body is almost like a powder. Surgical interventions for rare indication, vertebroplasty and dorsal column stimulation. The take home message. Low back ache may be caused due to lesions ranging from most trivial to most dangerous pathology. Thorough clinical examination, thorough investigation and appropriate, adequate, timely treatment can cure or at least considerably relieve the mass majority of conditions. Surgery is not essential in each and every patient of low back pain. 90% you can avoid. But those that you decide, please do operate early, don't wait. Thank you. Questions? Yes, sir. Role of the epidural steroid in your practice. When I was training epidural steroids, I saw work well. When I started practicing, somehow I was not attracted to it. I do not do it. But I do not deny that it offers relief. 
My protocol of treating the patient is to start with an antidepressant diaxylitic, doesn't get better, go on to NSAIDs, then I investigate. I don't do MRI at the first case. When I investigate, if I find it is, I give him absolute bed rest at his own residence. I rarely take him to the hospital. I don't advise traction at the initial moments. After about one or two weeks, if he doesn't get better, then I take him into the hospital and give him continuous traction. In my words, continuous is 8 hours a day. I understand there are people doing it for 15 or 30 minutes a day. But this is how I have been taught and I have been following, so I find it easier this way. So I give it for about 8 to 10 hours a day and then give him rest for about 3 weeks. He doesn't get better, I offer him surgery. Most of them get better. So then I advise them spinal exercises. I have a physiotherapist working with me and I ask them to follow up with me every month. Show me in my clinic what exercise they do at home. And then I check with the physiotherapist what they do. Most of these people get better. There is no question. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a Actually.